Welcome back everyone to this week's technical apologies it's a bit late as you might be able to tell I've got a slight cold but it isn't Covid so that's a good start. As usual if you watch the videos and you find them halfway useful by all means click subscribe hit the little bell so you don't miss future videos it does help more people to see the videos and to grow the channel. So the topic this week is quarantine treatments for sheep. Now, the autumn is a very important time for sheep movements around the UK. That's because it's typically when people are buying breeding replacements, either females, ewes, or males, rams or tups. They might also be buying ewe lambs to gimmer on, i.e. grow on for years so they're fit to breed. And people are still buying store lambs, that is fat lambs who haven't quite made the grade, gone on to some better ground in order to hit the right spec. If you can take one thing away from this video, it's a common veterinary adage, and that is that a sheep's worst enemy is another sheep. And by that, I don't mean sheep hate members of their own species, but one new sheep may bring with it some unwanted guests, which then go on to do a great amount of damage. In this video, we'll mainly talk about the parasites sheep can bring on. I won't be too specific about exactly what treatments to use. What I will do, is say, of course, as always, go and speak to your own vet. And SCOPS, that is Sustainable Control of Parasites in Sheep, have recently released new resources to help farmers understand what they should be doing with oncoming sheep. So getting back to what exactly, if you buy a tup, a packet of gimmers, some store lambs, what might they be bringing with them in terms of parasites? First of all, they're going to be bringing roundworms. Those are the gut worms that live in sheep. Why does that matter? On all sheep farms, there will be roundworms already. What might be different about the roundworms these sheep are bringing in might be their resistance profile. If you farm sheep, you're probably aware that there's widespread resistance to all three groups of commonly used worm. The group ones, which is the whites, group twos, the yellows, and group threes, the clears. On your farm, you may be lucky enough to have a worm population that is perfectly susceptible to all three groups. If you do, that's something that's really special you should look after. The truth is most sheep farmers simply don't know the resistance profiles of the worms on their farms. And so when a sheep comes on from an unknown farm, you've really got to assume that there are some resistant roundworms in those sheep. <clears throat> How do you deal with that? Well, as I said, go and talk to your vet, have a look at the guidance. Normally it's some sort of combination of wormers, a group four, such as your orange or group five even, sometimes in combination. And it also depends on what you do for the next parasite. The next parasite is sheep scab. Sheep scab, of course, being that horrible little mite that causes really intense, intense itching, even seizures in sheep that are badly affected. It's something we wiped out in the 1950s and then again nearly wiped out in the 70s. Unfortunately, we've been a bit complacent since then and it's made a resurgence. Remember, sheep don't have to be actively itchy to be carrying sheep scab. Now, what can you do to prevent sheep scab? Traditionally, there's been two options of treatment. The first is some sort of injectable clear wormer that also does sheep scab. For example, products containing doramectin or moxidectin, those injectables have traditionally been used to control sheep scab. The other is organophosphate OP dips. Now, this is my opinion. By all means, again, go and discuss it with others. I'm a big fan of the OP dips. I think they do come back, especially with contract dippers. The difficulty, of course, comes in when you've simply got, say, one, two, 10, 20 sheep to treat rather than a thousand. These guys are often set up to treat hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of sheep in a day to get them out and treat a few might not work for them. To make things more complicated, there are now sheep scab mites that are resistant to the injectable clear wormers. So we can't always assume that one of those injectables is going to protect us and the flock from scab. Finally, the other parasite is liver fluke and especially liver fluke that is triclobendazole resistant. Triclobendazole is the only active ingredient in liver flucicides that can kill fluke down to about two weeks of age. It makes it a really important product but unfortunately, for a number of reasons, resistance has become very common in certain parts of the UK. And even where it isn't, we shouldn't be complacent. Again, you can treat it like roundworms. You should probably assume a degree of resistance. So you want to use a flucicide, not a triclobendazole ideally, but some other flucicide, a clozantel-based product, nitroxanil-based product, 
talk to you there again about the specifics. I'm just giving examples. So those are the treatments for the various parasites that might come on with sheep we're buying in. Just to recap, that was resistant roundworms, sheep scab and liver fluke, especially liver fluke that is resistant to triclobendazole. Those aren't the only bugs that can come on with incoming sheep. Causes of lameness are another one. Foot rot, again, is probably present on most UK farms. People are familiar with foot rot. What they're perhaps less familiar with is that there are several strains of foot rot. And so not all may be present on one farm at one time. If a sheep comes in that's carrying a novel strain, a new strain that you don't have on your farm, and that gets introduced into the flock, it can really run riot, gives the sheep a bad time, and you'll end up being the shepherd who ends up treating a lot of lame sheep. So those are the main threats posed by sheep coming on. That doesn't mean all flocks should be totally closed. I get it, sheep cells are a fantastic part of the social and economic calendar in the UK. They really are great institutions. To make them even better, to make sure they're always going to be viable, we really need to protect flocks from any pitfalls they might encounter. This is just a roundup, it's just a summary. There are lots of other things to consider. Compared to the past, there are a lot more tests at our disposal to make sure the parasite issues are being dealt with, fecal egg counts to make sure wormers have worked, scab serology, that's blood tests looking for scab antibodies, fluke copper antigens and serology again. The exact treatments and tests you want to use will depend on the type of farm you are, on what you're buying, and again, your individual context. That's why it's so important to go and talk to your vet. I'm going to put a link to that new SCOPS resource. It fleshes out some of the ideas we've discussed in this video. I highly recommend if you are a sheep farmer and you're buying in sheep to go and take a look. That's it for this week. Over and out.